this is uh, just a chance to get involved in just some national science work based on looking at dark skies, basically looking at the effect of light pollution in certain towns or cities. Um, it's by the, the, the CPRE, which is the Campaign to Protect Rural England. Um, this was actually on the BBC local news last night that we're talking about. Just, so um, it's, it's, it's uh, I was already, already planning to do this. I've, I've, I've done this now for maybe the last two, three years and we've submitted data. So it's your chance just to go outside have a look at some stars. It's it's, uh, it's, it's a very very famous constellation, which is called Orion, um, and you basically count stars and then you submit it on a website. So I'm I'm going to attach a, a link to the website and then um, and and then you can go from there. It's it's a really easy thing to do. Should be quite a nice thing to do to get outside. I, I would just say if you are going to go outside, make sure you go with an adult or that they at least know that you're going outside. Or if you're in a garden, fair enough. Um, don't just wander off into the street and do a minor care. Um, but this is all you've got to do. So th this is the constellation of Rhine. Now you can't quite see it quite so well on the on this picture. So I'm going to show you something else. But you basically draw a rectangle, just like the it's a pretend rectangle. It's not going to be the, like magically like that in the sky. So you, you you connect the four corners of of Orion, and you just count how many stars are inside it. Now, now this one obviously is. Would be quite difficult to count. You're not going to see this sort of picture. Um, I wouldn't have thought. Okay, so th this is where um, I'll show you an example of what it could look like. This this is uh, Ellie uh, from a couple of years ago. I think it was 2019. Um, and this is a photograph she took of Orion. You, you can very really, very really clearly see it's Orion. Um, now, if you were to draw on the the rectangle like they've done, then this is the rectangle that they were showing you. So you basically look in the sky, you look in a pretend rectangle, then you count the stars that's inside there. So you can see there's, there's one, two, three, I think I can see one there, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, and then that's basically it. Now, it could be that when you were doing it on the night, you can see a lot more stars in this. Obviously, um, different people's phones, different people's cameras aren't going to pick up all the stars and say so. If, you, if you're getting such a nice little image of the sky, probably you could see much more in the night. Um, that's it. Now, you don't count these four corners. So you don't count the stars in the corner. Don't count either of those. You just count the ones that's inside it. And that's it. So you can go outside, find Orion, it's really easy to spot. Um, you count the stars it's inside that rectangle and then you submit your, your um, score on the website, the CPRE website, which I'm, I'm going to give you a link to, and um, put in your postcode so you can track it. And it, and it actually leads to, to proper data. So, so on this picture, if I just um, show you another image, of what you might see then this one is a, a high quality image of, of orion but if i flip between the two you can see that those stars are virtually exactly the same place okay so um so you've got the four corner stars and you've got three that go along the middle which is actually called orion's belt um and it is a really really good example of what you can see now obviously this picture there's not going to be many places where you can go and see this many stars. Um, it's likely that's been taken with a long exposure camera or, or lots of images and then you stack them together, do lots of computer processing. Um, you might do that if you do uh, photography in your spare time. But So what you can see is that they're very clearly different colours. So the one at the top is a, is a clearly a red colour. The one at the bottom is a blue colour. That one there is quite fuzzy. So I think there's somewhere around there you've, you've got a, a nebula rather than just a single star. But you can see around the picture, there's lots of different colours. And then this is where, uh, when you do GCSE, you, you, if you do GC physics, you do the star cycle and look at the the um, how you do get different colours. And if you do air level, there's an astronomy topic where you, where you look at the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram and it, it explains all the different colours and the temperature of the stars. It's, it's just a pure link between temperature and colour. 
So um, this is a map of what of what the the CPRE produce. So you put in your number of stars. So in that last one, we had something like eight. Now eight would correspond on this to severe light pollution still. So I'm guessing there's probably on on the real night you probably see more image, uh, stars than just those eight. But if you can see six to ten, I think last year I can see about six to ten. It will come up with a little red dot, so you can see where all these little red dots are on the map. There, where you can only see between six and ten stars, and then you'll, you can see they're clustered. There's London, Birmingham, somewhere around about the middle there. Oh, look, northeast. Oh, okay, that's that's clearly lots of light pollution up there. Um, if you get lots of stars, so if you can see over 30 stars, it'll be classed as a dark sky. So when you see these purple dots and blue dots, these are areas where obviously there's not as many people living there. They're out in the countryside. You can see many, many more stars because there's less light pollution. So th this is what this map's tracking. It's just trying to track where um, we're, we're ruining the night skies due to excess of light pollution. So you, you can just by submitting your, your data, you can get your little dot on the map and then um, you, you can compare it and come back and look at this. This is from 2019. So again, there was a different one last year. But um, it, it is really just as simple as that. Um, you can literally count the stars all this week. So it will go up till, till Sunday. So um, there's still plenty of time. And the problem is, is that you've got to keep an eye on the weather. Now tonight, when I've been out, I could I could I could see Ryan. The forecasts might be a little bit cloudier, so my best tip will just be as soon as you can see it on one of the nights, you might as well count the stars. And if you count more stars later on in the week, you can use that instead. Okay, pick a time after dark, so after seven p.m. It's going to be dark enough. You can do this from from your garden, but that's what you do next. And then you find find a Ryan. It'll be in the south. Uh, don't count the four corners. Let your eyes adjust. And then you count how many stars there are. Make note of it. And just go with a naked eye. Don't use binoculars. Obviously, obviously, though, once you've counted them, by all means, get your telescope out. Get your binoculars out. A good pair of binoculars. Obviously, once you've spotted them, once you've counted how many stars you can see, by all means, get your telescope out. Get your binoculars out. Have, have a good look. See, see how many you can see with binoculars. Again, I'm going to send you the link so you can put this on the link, but that, that's basically it. Yeah, try to take some pictures at that point. If you've got a, an Apple phone, they've got a really good night, uh, night app, which you can, or nightcap app, which you can use to take pictures of the night sky. Um, see what you get. Mess around with the, with the light settings and, and see how many stars you can get. Right, I'm just showing you this website. This is quite a nice website. This is called timeanddate.com. Um, you can basically pick any time and date. This is this is Monday, and this is at about eight o'clock. I'm currently looking southwest. I can see some stars. So if I look around, now they said look south. So if I look south and look up a bit, you should just about recognize that. Okay. Now, again, really, this has got many, many more stars than what you're going to see in um, in Corsham or in Box. Okay, the, the, so that, to me, looks like Orion. And now what you can do with this website is turn on the constellations and you can see Orion. Now, um, the thing why some people like astronomy so much is because there are so many things you can learn about the sky. So it, just in Orion itself... Um, there's some really, really famous stars in there. So again, the, there's lots of different ways to pronounce these. And you probably know I don't pronounce things like most other people anywhere. So I call that Beetlejuice. Other, other people call it different things, but that's Beetlejuice. Now, Beetlejuice was in the news last year because it was dimming. It's a really bright star, but it was actually dimming. And um, people couldn't really work out why. I think they have, have sort of explained why, why it was since then. But people are getting quite worried because, not worried, but excited more than anything, because Beetlejuice is a star which at some point people are hoping is going to explode. 
it's going to be a, a turn into a supernova. Um, so that was a really famous star, but also down the bottom is another star, which is also quite famous. It's called Rigel. That's a really bright star. Yeah, that's a very, very blue one. So just in Orion itself, and it's called Orion the Hunter because it looks like this is supposed to be its arm. It's holding up some sort of sword or club. It's got a shield out in front of it. Um, that's its belt across the middle. Some people think that oh, that's maybe it's like scabbard for its, for a sword. Um, it, it it is a very very famous picture in the sky. And you got to remember that these have been around for as long as humanity has. So when people look in the sky, or most of them have been anyway. So when you look in the sky, this, this is the constellations people are going to be be seeing. And hundreds or thousands of years ago, there wouldn't be as much light pollution. So there's the, they'd be much more vivid in the sky. Um, but the Rhine itself, if I highlight Rigel first, that, that's quite special. Now, the, the thing is, it looks really quite small from there. If you actually look at Rigel, that's how big Rigel would be compared to the sun. So the sun's a little dot down in this bottom corner. Um, just down there, look, that's how big the sun would be. That's how big Rigel would be. So it's around about 80 times bigger. Um, it's not very old at all. It's, I think it's maybe like 8 million years old, right, Gail, which which sounds old. But the sun is something like 5 billion years old or 5,000 million years old. So right, 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 is basically big. It's, um, it's given off lots and lots of energy. At some point, that's probably going to go supernova. Um, however, the big stars which do that, are very very important because our sun we know that our sun was formed from the leftover parts of one of these big stars going supernova because when it goes supernova you can then generate elements or you can fuse elements which are which are heavier than iron if you look at Rigel, what you won't find is any really heavy elements heavier than than than, than iron but if you look at our sun there's lots and lots of different elements in the sun it's much more complex um, that's because it's been formed from the leftover bits from a supernova. Um, that's, that's basically all everything on Earth. The only reason why we've got heavy elements on Earth is because of the fact that it's been generating the supernova. So the, the only reason why life is here um, is because of a star. So essentially, the remnants from a star is what is in every one of us, which which is why people get quite poetic about the fact that we're all made of stars. Um, this, however, is another reason why people get fascinated about stars. This massive red circle is how big Betelgeuse would be compared to Rigel, which is this one down there that like you've just seen. So the sun, which would be a tiny little dot. So Betelgeuse is, is like, it's, it's a red supergiant. It's huge. Uh, if, if that was in place of the sun, we probably would be like inside the outer layers of Betelgeuse, um, which means you'd be dead. All right. So at the minute, we're happy with the sun. The sun's a very stable star. It's about five billion years old. It's probably got another five billion years of lifetime left before it dies. Um, but on this picture as well, you've got other stars, which which I'm going to talk about just in a minute. Oh, now that's back to um, Orion. Now, th this is good. Now, that's Orion because what you can see from Orion is that it, the reason why people like it as well is that's a very, very good indicator um, constellation. So you can actually work out lots of different things from it. So if you use the belt as as like a almost like an arrow. Now, if you go downwards from that belt and go down in that direction, you end up with this thing down here pretty much. Yeah, you get a really, really bright star closest to the horizon. And then um, that one is called uh, Sirius. So that's Sirius. And that, that's sometimes known as a dog star because it's in um, Canis Major. It's, uh, it is the brightest star in the sky apart from, obviously, the sun. So it's the brightest star in the night sky. Sirius, um, from the Greek, probably means glowing or scorching. That's because it's, it's, it's how bright it is. 
but also what you'll often see is they'll often twinkle. So when it's low at the sky, because the light's getting distorted as it comes through lots of atmosphere because it's so low, it will always flash green and red. So people often look at it and think it might be an alien. It's 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 not just really, really bright. Um but now again, if we go up in the other direction this time, that way, oops, let's get a straight line. Okay, let's just pretend we're going up that way. Now you'll get somewhere around about there-ish, okay? And then you'll see a really bright star up there as well. And that one there is um is called Alderbaran. Now Alderbaran is uh, in the constellation Taurus. So that's, that's sometimes called the, the Eye of Taurus. So again, lot, lots of these different stars that are quite famous ones. So the, the brightest ones in the sky. And again, a lot of them are much, much bigger than our sun. So Sirius is, is a white star. It's still bigger than the sun. Um, in fact, technically, it's, I think it's a white dwarf. It's, it's just a big one. And then this one will be older barons. So older barons bigger than than Sirius, and that's how big it would be compared to the Sun. Um, older baron is about sixty five light years away, which means it takes sixty five years for the light to get from it to us. Uh, and older baron. I think means follower in in Arabic because it, it tends to always follow what would be the Pleiades, which are the seven sisters, um, which is again the little cluster of stars that you might know of. So again, there's lots and lots of history in stars. There's lots of of fascinating things you can find out about them. But if I just go back to this, so you can see now that we've got these um, constellations back on, that's Taurus, and that's supposed to be I think the horns of the bull. Okay, that, that's one of its eyes. I'm not sure where its legs are lying, but you got, you got to use imagination for these things. And then if I go down to Sirius, which again is really, really quite low to the to the sky, yeah, you see it's it's the the Canis Major. So that that's that's Sirius. That's that's why they call it the Dog Star. And again, it's quite famous because it's really used for navigation in um, for thousands of years. It's um, if you hear about the dog days of summer, I think that, that comes from that star as well. So there's lots of history behind it as well. And just while we're on, I'll just turn that one off and then I'll rotate this round because there's, there's another nice, there's another nice constellation you can spot from. Orion, that's if you sort of go the opposite direction now. So you're going from right girl and you're going up through Beetlejuice. If you keep going, then you get to this bit up there. Yeah. And that bit is an, quite another famous constellation, which is, well, that one's called Castor. And Castor has a twin, which is called P, P Pollux. Okay. You've got, you've got to be careful how you say that one. Castor and Pollux, which are the, the heads of the Gemini twins. So I put the constellations back on. Then that's the uh, the Gemini twins up there. So so again, that's another nice, easy ones to spot. Those are quite bright in the sky as well. So you can see you can see Castor and Pollux um, as part of the Gemini twins. You can very easily see. So you can see Castor and Pollux. You can see Beetlejuice. You can see Right Gale. You can see. Aldebaran, you can see Sirius. There's an awful lot of different stars you can see in the night sky. So try taking some pictures of them. See, I see how many you get. If you get any good pictures, then either send them to me or you can uh, tweet them at caution underscore science, and then we'll get them there. But yeah, uh, I'll attach the link to get to the C P R E website. And and this is the time and date website. So just have a look, have a play around, see if you can get outside. But again, do it carefully. Make sure you're with adults. Um, and there's lots of things that you can see. Okay. So thank you if you have made it to the end of this for listening.